In the previous video, we cloned old school HTML bootstrap locally. And the question now is, how does Git maintain that relationship between our remote version and our local version? And the answer is, it does it with what's called a remote URL. You can either add these remote URLs manually, or in our case, when we ran Git clone, it took that URL that we entered and used that as the remote URL. Once you've cloned your repo, you can check what your remote URL is by running git remote dash V. On the left hand side, we've got the remote URL name. And by default, that's going to be origin, although you can customize that to something else. Then we have the URL and then whether it's a fetch or a push. So a couple of things around the git remote command, you've got git remote add, git remote rename and git remote remove. For git remote add, you need to then also pass in the name. And if we were creating this from scratch, as you can see it, the name would be origin and then the URL and that would be the URL right there. For git remote rename, you've got to pass in the old name and the new name. So let's say we wanted to rename origin to be GitHub. We, we type in git remote rename origin and then GitHub. And then lastly, to remove a remote URL, it's git remote remove and then the name. So if we wanted to remove this origin, it would be git remote remove origin. Now I'm going to copy this over here and I run git remote remove origin. So that's gone through fine. And if I run git remote dash V, I have no origins. So let's run git remote add We'll call it origin. We'll paste in that same URL. Once more, we'll run the git remote V command. And now we're back to where we were. Let's run that last command to rename it. So we'll go git remote rename origin and we'll rename it to GitHub. And there you go. Where it now previously said origin, it now says GitHub. I'm going to switch that back. So git remote rename GitHub. And in this case, I'll call it origin. So that remote URL is the crucial link between your local repository and your remote repository for the same project. The next question is how do we get our changes from the local site onto the remote repository? So I'm inside of my repository. I'm going to create a new branch with, with a git checkout command. And I'm just going to call it new branch. We'll run git status and we can see we're on new branch with nothing to commit. So now let's just create a new file and I'm going to call it new file.html. Once more git status and then we'll go git add full stop and git commit dash M. So now we're ready to push this through. I don't want us to focus on the git push command because I have a standalone video coming up shortly. So I'm just going to run the command. And in the other video later on, I'll talk you through git push. So we run git push and now git says adding your username. Now what's going to happen here is if you try and enter your username and your password that you use for GitHub, it's still going to fail. And it's going to say to you support for password authentication was removed on August 13, 2021. And what's happening here is that Git wants us to prove that we are who we say we are, just like any other website. So it wants to authenticate us before it allows us to push to a repository. And in our case, even though this repository is owned by us, Git needs to know that the actions we're performing on our own computer, the push command we're trying to run is coming from us. And that's why we have this layer of authentication. So we've got a couple of different ways we can do this. The easiest way, and I'm not going to show you this in this course, but if you're new to web development and you're struggling with the other ways that I will be showing you, then just use this way. Download the GitHub command line and you can log in through your CLI first and then Git will allow you to push and pull. The other two ways that I'm going to show you are to use what's called a personal access token. And we manage these from inside of our GitHub account or to set up an SSH key and to use that to connect securely to Git. 